Uh, thank you all for having me, and I, I, again, I'll echo the Happy New Year. Um, let me first say, I didn't grow up in poverty. Uh, I didn't grow up rich either. Uh, but I've learned what I am talking about because I've been involved for the past 35 years of working with kids and families up in the green area uh, and, and learning from poverty through their eyes. And as I've worked directly in leading a volunteer-based tutor mentor program, I've been reading uh, many, many different uh, articles every year that help me understand poverty from the perspective of what a lot of other people have come to understand poverty. Uh, just today, I pulled off this uh, report right here, uh, which is a cost of poverty study that's uh, talking about Ontario, Canada. But if we read it, it, it would be the same for Chicago. And so, what, when I talk about poverty, uh, one of the things I've learned is, is uh, in these cost of poverty studies, there's a difference between being poor and being in poverty. Uh, there's a lot of poor people, uh, but in a lot of places where people are poor, the lifelines and the things that help you move from being poor or take care of your needs are in place. And so uh, the being poor is, is not a, a, a loss of hope or hopelessness. Uh, on the other hand, uh, one of the books that I read about uh, 10 years ago was uh, titled uh, American Apartheid. It's by Douglas Massey and uh, Nancy Dinton. And, and they talked about uh, a, a segments uh, of our big cities where being poor and being isolated and being segregated uh, created a, a, a lack of access to uh, the different resources that other people might have uh, to help them overcome the poor. And, and that's where poverty creates a sense of hopelessness, where uh, in another report that I just read uh, uh, this week uh, about uh, young people who don't believe they're going to be alive when they're age 20, and therefore their behaviors uh, are much more destructive <laughs> to themselves and to the community uh, than other young people who might not. Uh, when I talk today, so when I talk about being poor and being in poverty, uh, the tutor mentor program I lead is called Community Connections. Uh, over the years of doing this, I began to network with other people who also operated tutor mentor programs. Uh, and from my advertising jobs at Montgomery Ward, uh, I understand that in order to support uh, 400 stores all over the country, we had to provide advertising every day to try to get customers to come to those stores. And we did that, and we spent about $250 million a year to do that. That was 20 years ago. Well, if, if you take that kind of thinking into what we now call the Tudor Mentor Connection, we map where poverty is. Uh, on this map, uh, you, you can come up and look at it later or you can go on our websites. The shaded areas, the, uh, the reds and the blues, are the highest concentrations of poverty in the city of Chicago. Uh, where we are right now, we're like an island surrounded by high concentrations of poverty. And every neighborhood on this map needs a whole range of services for little kids and middle kids and older kids and uh, adults and seniors uh, that should be the best available in the world. It's not good enough to have a few things in one part of the city and not have those same things in another part of the city. So uh, what we've been doing is, where is poverty? How can we get people to look at this map? And then how can we get more people every day to be reading the research, talking to each other, learning from each other, so that the actions begin to do the things that would provide the programs and the resources and the services 